Well, folks, want to invite you to the ministry of uh, the pulpit of Upper Kings Clare Baptist Church. We want to thank you, um, however you join us, whether it is through the internet or whether you come to the physical church. We just want to welcome you. With that, I'm just going to uh, remind God's people for certain protocols that we follow here. We are still doing the social distancing, hand sanitizing, uh, wearing of masks. We hope that we can get some uh, clearance that we will be able to sing uh, come this Christmas season. Uh, I can feel it in myself and I can feel uh, among the brethren just the desire to worship God. And that's what we do. So we just want to again encourage for all those that come, uh, we will do our best to follow the protocols. Uh, and we want to do that for the safety of everyone. God has been good to us that not one person has come down with COVID-19 pertaining to this church uh, and within the body of the fellowship. So I just want to thank God for his hand of protection. And really, that's what it is. We can do all we want. It's the God who protects us and watches over us. And that's more important to me. With that, we begin our Christmas season. And as it is... Um, uh, it, it comes so quickly, and we get so busy. But uh, so I take time to talk uh, about uh, Christmas, about Christ coming, and also we do in this church follow follow a tradition of lighting the Advent candle. Uh, each candle uh, representing one wonderful word, words that hold us together. That uh, really gives us strength to go on. So without any due delay, also, uh, you know, as a people of faith, we want to again focus our eyes uh, to God's word and know from God's word what he's going to be saying to us in these days, especially with so much happening. With that, I'm just going to start with a word of prayer, and then I'm going to begin with uh, the Advent reading, the first Advent reading. Uh, for this season, and uh, the first Edwin, uh reading will come from Hopeful Gifts, Hopeful Gifts. Um, I want to thank the convention, uh, they sent this uh, to us, and it's just beautiful the way they have set it up, so I'm going to be reading through that, but let's begin the word of prayer this morning, and we pray, let's remember those who are laid up because of various uh, illnesses, and difficulties. Let's uh, pray for our country, for our leaders, uh, and also pray for one another. So would you just bow for a word of prayer with me at this time. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. They all belong to you, for you are worthy of all praise. And we want to thank you that you have loved us so much, and you have proven your love to us through sending your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love towards us. Today, Lord, we come before you thanking you for this beautiful part of your vineyard that you have allowed us to dwell in. Thank you for all the blessings, Lord. And even though we know that the season has turned and now we are facing the winter, but yet, Lord, this part of the world, you have just been so gracious to us we have not suffered many disasters that we see taking place around the world from flooding to earthquake uh, to major snowstorms thank you father for your grace uh, we don't take it that we are exceptional people and that we deserve this but father we know this is just your pure grace over our lives for that we want to thank you we want to pray for the leaders of our country father we know the leaders are dealing with major uh, issues dealing with this pandemic and father we just pray for wisdom for our leaders we pray Lord that they would seek answers not only from men uh, and we know that uh, our answers to this great dilemmas uh, is mostly nothing father I pray that our leaders will seek your face they will turn to you and cry out to you so they would know how to lead your people in the right way we just pray, Father, that you give us men and women that know you, that love you, and that will stand in the gap for 
the responsibility you put under their feet. Father, we thank you for every one of them. There are many we don't agree with in philosophy, even in faith, but yet we pray for them because you have told us to pray for those who are over us. Father, we also want to pray uh, to you today. There are many within, uh, within the fellowship that are having certain physical difficulties, even right now, Lord, remembering a brother. Uh, we just want to pray. Extend your hand of mercy, Lord. We have seen you extend your hand of mercy over so many. Yet again, we come to you and we pray. Please, Father, touch those who are struggling even now, even today. Let them know that you are near. And if they do not know you, Lord, I pray that you will turn their eyes to look to you, to cry out to you, to come to faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, that you may be their healer. Now we just want to thank you, Father, again for... As we look at uh, the way the days are turning and Father, the complication this pandemic has brought in the lives of many uh, and those that are suffering uh, beyond and above because of this uh, pandemic. Father, some have even uh, suffered the job loss and uh, others are suffering pressure. Uh, Father, I just pray that you be very close to them. Give them wisdom. Help them to seek to do what is right. Help them to even take this time and let their faith work it out for them. Father, help us not to live in fear, in anxiety, because the world around us. Help us to live in faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, who promised us as he went, he said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So Father, keep us ready for that wonderful day. And then thank you for allowing us another season where we come to celebrate the greatest celebration ever the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ as a babe in Bethlehem. Thank you, Father. We do look at this as one of the most wonderful, life-giving gift ever. And Father, as we emulate the idea of giving gifts uh, this season, help us to remember that you started by giving us your only begotten Son as our Lord and Savior. And Father, in the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, in everything we give, whether it is service, whether it's a cup of water, help us to do it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy uh, for us. We also want to thank you for the faithfulness of your people. Father, those who have been so gracious in sharing with us the resources you put in their hands. And Father, so that we would use these resources to further the gospel of the kingdom. We want to thank you at this time for our dear sister, Jacqueline Hino, out in Chad, uh, Father, s s um, working for you, working to see that the people, the Kara people would receive the word of truth, your word, in their language. Father, we pray you watch over her, you protect her, you bless her. She'll be away from family, uh, Father, her physical family, and from the family of the church, but yet she will be in your presence among other brothers and sisters out in Chad. Bless her there, Lord. Watch over her, watch over her health. And then, Father, we also want to pray, uh, as we think of Jacqueline, you know, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters in the Dominican, for the work you have put on their hands, Father, for the blessings you're bringing their way. With meager resources, Lord, your name is being lifted up, and Christ is being enthroned in the lives of many. For this we are so thankful that you have allowed us the privilege to see this and to be a part of it. Bless uh, Christian Rivas, uh, his children, his wife, the pastors among the Dominican church and the pastors in the Haitian church. Father, may your hand of mercy and love be extended to all of them that they would see your powerful hand reaching and touching lives like never before. Thank you for the, your grace and for your mercy. We will also not forget, Father, many brothers and sisters who are suffering around the world because of the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, extend your arm of mercy and grace. Extend your arm of protection over your people. Watch over them. Let their testimony be so powerful that the world that is persecuting them, that's trying to destroy them, to shut them up, will see Christ in them the hope of glory, that they will turn 
to follow you too. Thank you, Father, that even our enemies cannot stand against us because of your love and your mercy that is with us. For this we want to thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We begin our time with uh, the first Advent candle, the candle of hope. The candle of hope. Uh, the reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, and verses 6 and 7. These are the passages of the using to bring the word of God to our hearts today. So let me begin with the reading of God's word. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. See, as we gather today, we claim the gift of hope that is in Christ Jesus. We are all aware of the despair that is all around us. We hear about it globally. There has been famine, climate changes, disease. And we know it also locally. We see just the division in people. We see inequality, we see poverty, and we experience it personally. Never have I seen and heard and read about people suffering with depression, anxiety, and broken relationships. But can I say to you, as we light the first candle of hope, into this darkness, the light has come. Into this hopelessness and despair came the gift of hope, Jesus Christ. In the face of despair, we light the candle of hope. May the light from this candle say to all that God's hope is coming on earth as it's already in the heavens. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength and they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not be faint. Taken from Isaiah 40, 31. Friends, can I encourage you this Christmas season? Do not be afraid. Do not despair. God's hope has come. Let's reflect the gift of hope this Advent season. 